Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Modsville USA here, back with another solder prawn video today. We are going to be installing one of my Matrix 2.0 mod chips in a 90,000, the final revision with the built-in power supply, uh, PS2. Now these are the gnarliest, not for the faint of heart. Um, as you can see, we're we're starting off hard here with the difficult pins to solder to. Um, this is going to mainly be another just laid back, chill, listen to middies. I might chime in here and there. There is definitely a mistake that I made that uh, I didn't notice until after filming. So I'm going to make sure to point that out so you don't make the same mistake I did and uh, have to troubleshoot it but uh yeah we're just gonna hang out we're gonna do some soldering and listen to some midis but before we get any further into this gnarly install let's have a word from today's sponsor a huge thank you to today's sponsor PCB way not only do they offer PCB manufacturing but they now offer CNC and 3d printing services as well I've gotten PCBs for many of my products and projects manufactured by PCBWay before. The website is super easy to use and the quality and turnaround time is amazing. Very swag, very handsome. I like it. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the show. All right, back to the video. Now we're at four times speed and right now I'm using my J tip and I'm just tinning up the legs that we're going to be soldering to now here's where I made the mistake um, the A point in this video I am going to be soldering it to the wrong point I followed the via back to the wrong traits so the furthest pin on the right that's tinned up is incorrect. It's supposed to be one more over to the right. And it took, took me a little while to figure that out. Now we're doing it the hardest way, but it's also the sexiest way uh, of doing it. And the most difficult uh, three wires are these ones we're doing here first because they're right next to each other. As you can probably see by my dirty fingernails that this is um, very fine pitched uh, very close together and I'm just leaving it all in here um, mistakes and all I'm not gonna make it look like I do everything uh, perfect the first time we've got some bridging that we need to deal with um, so for this uh, you just clean your tip off just swipe it out that'll usually do it if you've got too much brid bridging you might end up need needing to use some wick um, but typically you just keep cleaning your tip and you'll get it out of there so these are tedious if you do them vertical like like I am doing here uh, getting them perfect is quite a pain in the ass you'll likely end up accidentally desoldering one you've already soldered it's just uh, you know it's just take your time with it you're gonna be fine um, but yeah it's very challenging at the end of the video there's gonna be a bonus I'm gonna show you how to do it the easy way um, it doesn't look as sexy but if uh, you're just interested in getting it done, it doesn't look bad. It's just these, you'll see, when, when you do them vertically like this, it's just uh, very aesthetically pleasing. So I like to do this. When, when I've got the time, I'll do it this way. So there you go, the hard part's over. The main strat is, uh, you know, you line it up everything's tinned and you simply press it to the pin it's just 
very easy for it to slip off. When you're using a finer tip like this, you know, it's, you know, getting enough heat by just pressing it. As you can see, I'm kind of using like the edge of it because I've got a big, bigger surface on the iron, generates more heat, flows it a little bit better. You can do it with the chisel tip as well. Uh, whatever works for you. I, I've been liking the J tip for these. And here's uh, here's the big mistake. This is the A wire. It's one pin. It's supposed to be one pin to the right. It's supposed to skip two pins. Um, I saw this to the wrong pin. And shout out to Halo Slayer over on Twitter. I, I literally uh, I got pigeonholed and could not see my own mistake. And. Uh, posted it on Twitter and he spotted it right away sometimes even the best of us need a, a second set of eyes on something you just get pigeonholed uh, too confident that you did everything right and you can't see a, a simple mistake that you made um, you need to either come back to it or get a fresh set of eyes you know um, happens happens every once in a while one of those days but yes that furthest wire to the right and that is one off all right here I am I'm just testing uh, make sure there's no bridging in continuity mode sometimes you can get a sneaky bridge uh, behind the pins that it's difficult to spot with the naked eye it's all it's very very fine stuff here too if you're doing with the this with the naked eye it's uh, much more challenging than what you see here with the zoomed in footage. Um, those pins on the left in the footage might look like they're bridge, but then it's just kind of glare. This is the Y point. This is responsible for um, region free DVD movie playback. Uh, now with the mod chip, it's not um, region free in the sense that you can put any disc in and it's gonna work you need to go into the matrix menu and change the region so it's region free uh, but you do need to manually um, toggle your region if you're playing uh, if you intend to play a DVD from say a PAL region you're gonna need to go in the settings and change your mode to PAL to play it it's not automatic. That seems to be the case for most region-free DVD playback. Uh, I don't know of anything that automatically switches. Uh, so here, this is the SX point. This is responsible for uh, PS1 playback. However, it's totally unnecessary with the way I set mine up. Because I flash Mechapoon, which I let handle PS1 region free and uh, backup supports which actually handles PS1 better than any of the mod chips um, typically you just press start to disable the mod chip and just let Mechapoon take over and it'll still work even if you don't solder that wire don't disable the chip so as far as all of this the wire routing here this is um, this just takes practice it's its own skill. Um, that's the glue. Loctite gel is where I've uh, dialed in. And just go minimal like this. Precision Q tip. Spread it around. And you just go in sections. Now, if you end up having a uh, portion of like see here with the components you need to route them around the components um, but if you're trying to manage your wire like over a bunch of components you use something like a little baggie piece of paper whatever to put between the wires in your board um, that really helps with keeping them all together as opposed to um, trying to do this with everything floating above a bunch of SMD resistors or capacitors or whatever.
At this point, we're folding it over the board. And it's just a lot of training, you know. It's um, using 30 AWG Kynar wire. And we do a whole lot of just sectioning things off. Training the wires how we want them. And there we go. So now we're moving on to the BIOS wiring. Uh, might be difficult for a newcomer, but this is significantly easier than what we already did with the, uh, the CD control wires there. So this should be a walk in the park by comparison to what's already been done. It's, it's a couple of pins here. The, spa the pins are much thicker. The spacing is more forgiving. And uh, yeah, we just tin up the ones we want to um, solder to. You could tin them all up, it doesn't matter. But it helps to keep track if you got a finer tip like this and you just tin the ones you're going to. It makes it a little bit uh, easier to eyeball. As you can see we already got a bridge there. If I remember correctly, I try to flow it out and do my best and end up just uh, getting lazy and or did it? No, nope, no. Nope. Looks like I just floated out. So the strat there is um, clean off the tip, add flux, just give it a swipe, clean the tip, swipe, clean the tip, swipe. So you're kind of um, the iron is absorbing the solder. You're cleaning that solder off, rinse and repeat until you clear the bridge. That is a pretty good strat to keep in mind for clearing uh, clearing bridges like that. Sometimes it just it's taking too long. Just use your braid. Use some goot wick and be done with it. Now as far as the uh, strategy with these wires, it's uh, I always end up with a whole bunch of wire scraps because um, you know we don't even have the chip, the mod chip on the board. I know exactly where the mod chip is. I've always got it planned out how the wires are going to be routed, um, but I just overcut the wire here, so um, I leave it too large. Now as you can see I've switched to my chisel tip here. Just a flat end, you know, similar style to something like a a flathead screwdriver esque shape. Um, just simply press the wires down. It's got a th bigger surface so the solder will flow better at a lower temperature. Um, the joints are much nicer and I believe I do go back over the other side just because some of those joints looked a little cold so I go back over it with the chisel tip just to make it look real nice And there, burned off too much insulation. Didn't like it. So I snipped it off. Started over. There we go. That looks better. Now you can do this with any 30 AWG um, Kynar wire. We've seen people do it with magnet wire. It looks like shit. Don't do that. 
Um, I've also seen people do it with that um, silicone stranded stuff you get on Amazon. Don't do that. That looks like shit. It's way too thick um, as far as the insulation goes. Um, now for power and ground, um, it is kind of the ritual to use um, like 28 AWG. That's kind of been the meta forever. Honestly, you would it's 3.3 volts, so you would be totally fine uh, with 30 AWG, but it's almost a tradition at this point. Let's <laughs> just use uh, uh, to d use 28. So you know, traditions are important, I suppose. So I do it. Um, but yeah, if you used 30, you'd probably be fine. But I say just use 28 W AWG, and I use the um, I use the silicone 28 from uh, from Amazon for the 28. The Kynar is from AliExpress. Really like this stuff. I have two different types of Kynar that I use. This stuff is much more manageable than the other stuff I have. It's really easy to train it. Um, insulation is relatively robust. Now as you can see, those yeah, those were the joints I had done with the J-tip, so they were not on there good. So I went ahead and redid them. Just cleaning them, popped them right off. So J-tip, no good for the BIOS. Here we go with the routing. Those right angles, that's all tweezer work. You just grab the angle, pull it, you know. Everything else, you just kind of line it all up. So we're doing power, doing ground. Boom. And with joints like that, it's a fine joint. Do I go back over that ground? Nah. I guess I don't. So here we go with the BIOS. And this is how I did it. Just going straight to it. So just be careful when you're eyeballing it. And I burn off the insulation um, when connecting it to the mod chip. Just kind of give it a little loop around the edge there. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look perfect. Sometimes you have some extra burned insulation. But uh, the thing with, if you're going to go real OCD, like obsesso about it and uh, use like nail clippers, uh, to try to strip it. It's a real fine line before you just clip that wire. And when you're dealing with something like so tight like this, um, where you really don't have any slack. So if you accidentally snip that wire, which is really easy to do, if you're trying to strip wire with toenail clippers, um, and you've got them all neatly packaged like this, then you've got one wire too short. Um, you're gonna be um, redoing everything if you want it to still look nice. So I sacrifice a little bit of aesthetics, burning the insulation off like that, um, in order to not be totally screwed <laughs> by accidentally snipping it uh, instead of stripping it. So you do you. <clears throat> uh, you know, some people are have that really dialed in. That's just, um, you know, one of those things where you, one of those measurements where it's like, is it worth it? And in my opinion, is not worth, the risk is not worth the reward there. Cause this still looks pretty damn nice. And now same thing here. We're just, uh, we're just lining them up, snipping it soldering to the chip easy peasy 
Now the mod chip itself is being held down uh, by a dab of hot glue on the back. As you can see it's a little bit loose, I believe at the end I give another dab on the corner. Some IPA must have gotten in there and uh, loosened it up. Oh right, and uh, S was on the wrong point so I had to run it, run it across like that uh, from the front. Not a big deal. Hurt aesthetics a little bit, but perfectly functional. And look at that. That's why we like that vertical, this resting on the chip like that. I think it's, um, that is a sexy ass mod chip install. And replace the battery. Look at that. Look at that motherfucker. Uh. And that's just me showing the uh, S being in the wrong spot there. Initially, and having to give the old reach around. Bonus strats. All right. Now, shout out to guys. I'm gonna leave a link to his channel. Uh, this is how he does the 90Ks and solders to them. And this is so much easier. Now, granted, I don't think it looks as nice, but it looks plenty nice. And it's about, I don't know, 20 times easier and faster to do. Uh, this is, we're just soldering to the base. We're gonna pre tin it. I'm gonna rest the wire on top, press it down, call it a day. Now it's still still a little slippy because it's going on top of the pin. Boom, easy. Soldered, done, good to go. Now I get a little OCD and want everything to be perfect even if it's already fine I'll think it can be better and do it again and again and again until I feel really good about it and then I bridge it and then I have to fix it <laughs> um, yeah just pre tinning here making sure and this time we got it right that via goes to that trace not the one directly in front of it now let me just show you how how simple this is we rest it we press it And we move on. <clears throat> I'm using a little uh, spudger tool there to mold the wire beforehand. Look, so I'm not molding it with the, the wire, it's just so it's all lined up. Because I am using a bit of a finer tip. Chisel tip's a little better for shaping it, but it's so fine that with the chisel tip on these, it's really easy to undo your previous wire. Um, so I, I'm going with the J tip. Dial up the temp a little bit. And uh, there we go. That's, that's not good. That's not done. There we go. That's good. And you definitely want to, you know, wiggle test these. Now, don't get in the habit of wiggle testing everything. If you've uh, worked on a Nintendo Switch and soldered to a 0201 component, wiggled a 30 AWG wire, you have snapped that component, potentially lifted up the trace. 
because the wire is just a little too thick for something like that. Some some things you don't want to wiggle, um, but when it comes to these pins on the board, I always wiggle test these. Just use your judgment. If your wire's thicker than the trace you're soldering to, you probably shouldn't. They should probably use a different wire because that's how you start lifting stuff, but it's totally sturdy enough to, to wiggle these and good practice in this case. We're giving it a clean. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is the hardest of the PS2 mod chip installs, the final revision. Now the, the 79,000 is just as difficult, but you don't get the benefits of, uh, you know, the internal power supply. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed it. If you need one of these mod chips, um, I'll have a link below. I sell these on modsvilleusa.com. Matrix Infinity 2.0s. I like these more than the Modbo because they ha actually have the PS1 boot animation or the pretty much any other, any Modbo, any other Matrix Infinity clone does not. So uh, that is why I like these. And uh, I really like the layout of these as well, more so than the Modbo's. Um, BIOS wires go on one side, everything else goes on the other, nice and clean, nice and tidy. And if you guys need any uh, PCBs manufactured, make sure to check out PCB Way. Thanks again for sponsoring the video. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.